welcome to another session on scientific method. This is Dr. Payne and in this video we are going to be looking at how to draw beautiful tables. Here is data from an investigation that we are going to put into a table. The data is quite messy at the moment so our table is going to clarify that. The data is looking at heart rate measured every minute on a short five minute jog. So time is going to be our independent variable here. And in general, we put time, our independent variable, in the first column. So we're going to put time here. And heart rate is our dependent variable. So we're going to put that in the right hand column. Now, what's missing in these two boxes at the moment are the units, which are very important. So we're going to add minutes in brackets and beats per minute, or you could write BPM. Now we need to add our data into the next few rows. So we're starting at naught, and we can see that heart rate is 62 at the beginning of our jog. And then we will add the rest of the data, making sure we use a ruler to keep things nice and neat. And then we go one minute, two minute, three, four, five. And making sure that we copy down our raw data correctly because you will lose marks in an exam if you input the incorrect data. Now there's still one key thing missing and that is a title. So we're going to make sure we include both variables in the title, so time and heart rate. So heart rate during a five minute jog measured at one minute intervals. And to make it really clear that that is our title, we're going to underline it. And voila. So far, we've been looking at examples where the independent variable is in the left column and the dependent is in the right column However, in some exams or textbooks, you might well see a different configuration of a table whereby the independent variable is in fact in the top row with the data following along on the right and the dependent variable is in the bottom row with the data following along on the right. So that's something that's quite easy to get your head around. It's representing exactly the same data, but just in a different orientation. So you might well see this in an exam, don't be afraid, but when you are drawing your own tables, we want to see the column set up. For many of your tables, you will want to include repeats. As all good scientists want to repeat their experiments, to ensure their experiment is reliable. So how do we represent that on a table? It's really nice and easy. What we do is we split the dependent variable column or top row and the column splits into however many repeats you have. Here we're going to have three, and we're just going to write repeat one, repeat two, and repeat 
three. And then in this column, you will have the first repeat data, the second repeat data, and the third repeat data. Note that the very top row of your dependent variable columns is all merged and then it's split into your repeat columns in that second row and then you will have to fill in all your data. Common mistakes to avoid when drawing tables. As you can see, a ruler hasn't been used, which makes it difficult to read off which numbers correspond with which. So we need to make sure we use a ruler. Secondly, we have ended up putting the dependent variable in the left column when in fact we need the independent variable, which is time, in the left-hand column and then the dependent variable goes into the right hand column so that's another important point to note independent independent equals left and dependent equals right we're also missing units from the top rows of our columns so we need to make sure that the units are included. So for example, for heart rate, you would have beats per minute, but obviously it would be in the dependent variable column. And for time, it would be minutes. We also need to check that our data is actually written down correctly. This um, should go four five rather than four six. So when you're in an exam, always make sure that the data you've been given is represented correctly in your table. And then most importantly, we also need a title. So we need data and our title to make sure the reader actually understands what's going on in your table title.